And if you listen to the rhetoric, if you listen to Yasser and you listen to Jay Monahan, they're very careful to say every single time they talk about this is that the PGA Tour is in a control position. Really, I think the reason Liv did this was it was, I think more than anything, it was just a reminder to the PGA Tour of who really still had the hammer. Folks, I've got Bob Crystal Ball, a legend on Twitter right now. The first issue we got to get to right now is your tweet on X about a message to the players of the PGA Tour. You are in trouble and screwed if you don't support the framework agreement. Let's say let's say this deal goes through, which is highly problematic. It's, it's going to have to pass three of the five players on the player uh, policy board are going to have to agree with this. I don't see that happening. Well... I hope the lived deal goes through now. Uh, it, it's it's obvious the best thing for the PGA Tour. You first came out here and did probably the best technical analysis of the framework agreement that, in my opinion, may have been intentionally leaked to NLU by the PGA Tour because we also had that Desert Duffer document leak, the yeah. Pontra papers. So yeah. there's some kind of coordination going on behind the scenes. There's a little bit of a campaign tactic here where NLU, of all people, is now trying to interpret it. And you're saying... No, thank you, NLU. In some ways, it didn't surprise me when the merger agreement came. Intellectually, I thought about it. And I said, God, at some point, something's got to happen. They're, they're going to come together. So when it came together, reading all the stuff about the framework agreement, lives gone. I don't know if you remember that. And if this deal goes through, I, I have no doubt that it will end live. Uh, you know, lives in the, in the more dominant position here. They've got... $32 trillion worth of oil underneath that sand. Uh, and they're not going anywhere. And Jay Monahan's going to you know, be the CEO of the, you know, whatever's left. And really what Piff wants is just to be an owner of the PGA Tour, some minority owner, and they're going to leave it at that. And I didn't see that. I saw that Yasser Al-Ramayan was very involved. He's a golfer. I don't think Yasser knows the first thing about golf. Not the first thing. The governor of Live is Yasser our Ramayan, who is well-educated, very clever, uh, very charming, and can be quite intimidating. And he loves golf. He had built this team of people to launch this thing off the ground. And as we later heard, people refer to it as his baby. You know, I felt that very early on, and I did not see him doing that. The most important points of that framework agreement were not being reported on correctly by the press. But it very clearly to me said that they were going to make teams work. That was part of the, the, the spirit of the agreement. And the second, um, even bigger issue was control. Now, yes, uh, you know, I, I've explained this to people. I've got institutional investments before um, as, as a person that does, you know, large real estate projects. And um, I've seen these agreements. I've negotiated them. Um, I, you know, I've been involved in, you know, what the terms mean. And to me, it wasn't very well written, frankly, part of the, uh, the paragraph. And it turns out later when I read all the drafts, it's because they added some stuff and it was, you know, sort of getting down to the deadline, I think, when they were going to announce this or negotiate. But as I read it, it said that there would be uh, essentially what are called veto consent rights. And what that means is that if, if you're going to accept, if you're going to, let's say you're PIF or you're an institutional investor into a company, you're going to want the, the people that you're invested in to run it. You know, that's not your day-to-day -day thing. You're not going to want to go run uh, PGA golf tournaments and you're not going to, you know, that day-to-day -day level is not what they're interested in doing, frankly, generally. Um, and, but they say, look, we're going to invest. You're going to run it. You are going to be in control of those. And you're going to go out and get the sponsors and do all the things you're going to do. But we are going to have major decision rights is another way it's termed in these agreements, which is um, you can't go out and sell that tour without our permission. You can't um, get rid of the tour without our permission. You can't maybe spend more than a certain amount of money. Um, and a big one that was in there is you can't go out and get additional investment and dilute it, dilute us without our permission. And in this case, without our first right of refusal. So I waited, frankly, I, first of all, I wanted to make sure, am I reading this right? And, um, you know, it talked about dragon tag rights and I, and I was trying to figure out if the veto consent rights were in addition to, or part of the additional investment clause. 
And I felt like the way it was worded, again, I didn't think it was worded well. Don't know who their attorneys were. <laughs> the attorney, right, is Ed Hurley. He, he's on the PGA Tour board of directors. His, his law firm, Wachtell and, and so and so and so forth, they're actually billing and they're the best M&A company. So it's strange that this is the best they could come up with. Yeah, I don't know. See, I don't even know who did the agreement, but I didn't, whoever did it, I didn't think it was worded that clearly. So, but, but it turns out later on when the Senate hearings happened, they released all the drafts and I read through the drafts and it turns out that as I read the drafts that the, the, the investment coming in was already in there in the drag and tag rights that they talked about, but what was added were the veto consent rights later. So I was right. The veto consent rights were separate. They were added separately and that's the way I read it. And so my point was that everyone was talking about, well, you know, PIF's not going to have any control and, you know, the tour is going to control everything. I'm like, you know what? It's not really the way the real world works. When you have an investor with that much money coming into it and they have veto consent rights, plus he's going to be chair of their policy board or whatever, he's going to have significant uh, control. Uh, you know, maybe not majority, but, you know, you know, <laughs> the, the way it works is the people with the gold, you know, they, they make the rules. So it's not, it can't just be all about the money, because why is the person spending the money the only person in the world not concerned about making a profit? He would do that for only one reason. He wants to launder his reputation. The Saudis are playing the long game, and they're trying to diversify their economy. And they're looking several decades down the road where they absolutely are desperate to diversify their economy. So they'll lose in the early goings of this to gain in the long term. Private equity is never going to make a deal like that. Let me ask you there then, why were they so insistent that Jay Monahan be, would have so much control? And remember initially that at no laying up KVV was they were all focusing on the fact that, hey, no, Greg Norman's not mentioned anywhere. He's out. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's interesting when you read the drafts, they had inserted in uh, Greg Norman and they wanted him out. And then Yasser said, no, that's not going to happen. And they took it out. He, he, he X'd that before the final version came out. Um, and good for him. You know, he's Greg Norman's gone in there. Some people like him, some don't. But the reality is he's executed. And why would, you know, what kind of person, you know, if you're going to trust somebody, what does that say? To me, it said that, look, this you know, Greg Norman's done a job as commissioner. And as far as I'm concerned, he's done a good job and I'm not going to, I'm not going to acquiesce to that kind of a demand. So I actually thought it was a good thing, you know, and, and to Jay Monahan, um, I watched yesterday, the New York times interviewed him on stage just five days ago. And they asked him some pretty tough questions. And, you know, I, I've obviously been very critical of Jay Monahan, but I watched him talk for that amount of time. And I, one, I just didn't get a good feeling about the guy. You know, my spider senses went up, if you will. <laughs> and he was almost, I would call it like, I'm not a psychologist, right? Um, you know, I, I can't, you know, psychologically analyze anybody, but just as a normal guy, um, like you and I are, I looked at him and I was like, this guy has a messiah complex. A lot of the professional golf world has kind of got something like the Stockholm syndrome uh, with, with Liv now. And when you read all of the things that he put out about how Tiger was going to say, was supposed to say these <laughs> points about he's a great leader, which is really weird <laughs> for normal people to like actually try to have that said about them. Um, he, uh, I think the guy, um, he, he literally was on this New York Times interview with, with uh, the guy and said that I firmly believe that I am the best person that can lead the PJ Tour. And that's scary given the amount of missteps and the, the, the misdirection and the lack of, of seeing the threat that was out there and dealing with it appropriately. It, it's, he is so insistent and Man, I felt like he's a guy that will play dirty. The way he comes off to me, I felt like he's a guy that will play dirty, that he'll do whatever it takes. And I looked at him and I was like, that's not a guy I would do business with. To back up your point, I remember in February of 2022, he's doing an interview with Mike Tirico, who's trying to play controlled opposition a little bit. And Tirico's asking him, well, what about China? 
because you know already the, already then the yeah. Saudis were the bad guys. But what about China? Oh, um, Jay Monahan's response is along the lines of it's a moot point because we can't play there now due to COVID. Well, the DP World Tour is back there. No sign, no no follow up on that thing. That guy also, I knew that gutless weasel was just calling out sick because he was stressed out. Everyone's like, I mean, what kind of loser? throws that out there. I have, a, I have a health condition and no one knows what it is. And I'm just like, he just doesn't want to show up. You, you want to know something? I have a theory. And, and, and this is a thing, like if you've been around business long enough, you see it, he's a number two guy. What I mean by that is there are some people that are naturally meant to be CEOs. They can understand threats in the landscape. They're out there. The thing that he did to those live players with clout. So the players may feel betrayed by Jay Monahan, but the real betrayal is not with Jay Monahan. It's with Phil Mickelson. It's with Bryson DeChambeau. It's with Brooks Kepka. It's with everybody that left for their own personal greed. You know, Phil Mickelson especially, you know, really took a huge brunt of that. But, you know, all of the live players, the team captains, the questions, the idiotic questions they were getting asked by the press about how they feel about playing, you know, working for the Saudis or whatever. It was so intellectually dishonest. The idea that Jay Monahan put those players through his reaction to live, his, his battle plan was to try to squash them, right? He's, and you can tell he's kind of that, he's, he said it himself, I'm a competitive guy. And um, after what he did to those players, the idea that he did that, and tried to hurt those players personally. They, he tried to personally hurt those players by doing that. The idea that when he's proven wrong, that he goes off on a stress relief, I give him, people have said, well, it, you know, people need to talk openly about these illnesses when they have them. I'm like, no, not him. I'm telling you, you do that to other people. You're a bad guy to other people. And you put people through that. I don't give you any quarter. To me, he's the ultimate bot feeder. Like, yeah, you, you right. can't get worse than this guy because he also tried to co op the 9 11 families. Remember that? And he's oh, giving oh. a speech to Jim Nance. And then um, I actually used a clip from that video where he's like, Have you ever had to apologize being on the, on the PGA tour? And then he's like pausing, staring at Jim Nance while his face is red and expecting a pat on the back or something. I used that clip in a, in a video I made, and the PGA tour try to copyright strike it. I had to go back and forth a bunch of times for them to release it. Yeah, it, it, to me, wa watching what he did, you know, this is, you know, most of what I have is opinion, you know, really like when we talk about this stuff, but he is the most disgusting, vile, uh, ethically challenged <laughs> leader that I can remember because of that very fact. He dragged victims and families of 9-11 victims into golf. And um, I thought it was inappropriate given the investment world and, you know, where cap and this in the state of capital markets and where uh, PIF is invested. I think, you know, frankly, Jimmy Dunn said something that I think is right, you know, to the extent people have concerns. And I think it's valid to have concerns of foreign investment in anything. And, and obviously it's valid to, to look at what's happened with countries. You know, there's another thing too. It's like, Remember, I don't think the United States has been a perfect actor. <laughs> Everyone has to flip their story now. What about the idea that the deal does go through? Why can't that be possible, Randall? Look, I, you know, I, I, I don't see that happening. Okay. You know, that the second worst thing that could happen to the PGA Tour was if, was if this merger went through. And the worst thing that could happen to the PGA Tour was if this merger didn't go through. Oh, boy. Even, even you have, like, the NLU, they're trying to support the PGA Tour using the blood money narratives. Their tweets are out there. They're for, there forever. How do you come back on that when you try to tell Bryson DeChambeau and, and associate him with blood money? It, it's just, yeah, I don't think you do, if you're intellectually honest. I'm putting out what I think. I'm not afraid to, you know, go against the norm, I guess. Well, the norm's been wrong the whole time. Right. At every point, every month, everything they said the past month has turned out to be wrong. Roy starts off strong with dead in the water. Now that dude's off the, the PGA Tour board of directors. Oh, it's, it's gone completely the other way. I mean, the best statement in golf history is Greg Norman firing back initially to Jay Monahan, surely you jest. And then it's just played out like Game <laughs> of Thrones. And uh, Jay Monahan eventually gets bounced because the Saudis want it.
I mean, why can't that be possible, Randall? Look, I, you know, I, I, I don't see that happening. You have some insight that bottom feeder scumbag Jay Monahan is gone, whether it goes through or not. So I, I'm going to be real careful what happened when I posted that and then subsequent posts. You know, you probably experienced this, but boy, I started getting these direct messages, right? From <laughs> people. And, you know, my, I'm not, like, I post under my real name. I'm not afraid to say who I am. It's pretty easy to find me here in Portland, Oregon, and, you know, find my company and get a hold of me and put a phone call into me or whatever. People reached out to me and, you know, I, they were, that they, they, like I say, and I say they, there's more than one, you know, I'll be frank with you. And, uh, you know, I actually went out to Florida and sat down. <laughs> You know, it's kind of funny. I, 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 I thought to myself, you know, uh, you know, who knows? Like Jay Monahan may last. I mean, you know, they're telling me there are people that work with them that you know eat meals with the guy, you know, that, you know, whatever. And they're like telling me he's done. He, there's just the way the, the way the organization is. There's no way he can survive. And I believe that. You know, I believe it. If it in a in a normal you know, rational world. I think they're right. And I tried to lay out why that is. And they, they talked about how Mana has, has undermined people. And the one that sort of caught me, which is the live players. How, how do you join together when he's trashed them and put them through this? How are they ever going to look up to him as a leader of, of uh, if, if the commercial interests go through and emerges, you know, whatever, how are they going to look up? I have the answer for you because I've had this experience before where now people just use the other talking point. Well, he had a gun to his head. He had no other choice. He was trying to save the PGA Tour. So there's always going to be someone who's going to be a Jay Monahan apologist or a PGA Tour dirty tactics apologist. Yeah, and I, I just don't see it that way. I mean, so one, he's never going to he's never going to have the trust of the players that went to live that he trashed, had trashed, the PGA Tour trashed and the whole machine, frankly, the whole press machine. And then two, he's never going to have the trust fully of the current PGA Tour players. You know, so look, if you're one of those tour players, you know, Tiger, we mentioned, he said the other day, I have confidence in Monahan, but then he turns around and said, but I was surprised and disappointed, whatever. But frankly, my view is that right now, Tiger and Rory got TGL. They're, they're like using this to their advantage. If you think about it, they're able to like, would Monahan ever have acquiesced to TGL <laughs> if he wasn't in a, a position of weakness? But let's just say that the deal goes through. If the deal goes through, I don't have any doubt that it will end to the it will lead to the destruction of Liv. You know, sadly, it's hard to imagine how Liv loses here. You still think that the merger should go through and is going through? Am I correct? Yeah, I do. And you know, look, I'll be honest. I think it may be because of a bias, an internal bias of mine, which is I've always loved people. They say you're a Liv shill, and you're a no. I'm. I'm a person that believes in honest reporting and honest, you know, uh, you know, like when we're reading about all this stuff, being like you said, like not being a bunch of false talking points, but deep down, like I've been a golf fan forever. I love watching it. I, I love going to PGA tour events. I've always liked it. I've always been a fan of the PGA tour. Boom folks. We just heard it straight from the horse's mouth. Bob crystal ball. Thank you so much for being on this episode of big boy pants golf.